Kyle from Scram Speed, and today we are going to be installing a chassis disconnect on my turbo mount in the blue car. Looks something like this. They're pretty sweet. Check it out. We're going to make a little video today on chassis disconnects, which is those little guys down there. I have a bunch of them on the car so far, and I'm about to add another one. Whoop, let me get through here. That's what they look like. They're uh, they're just four bolt flanges, so that way you can unbolt stuff that's mounted. That one goes to the radiator. This one goes to the turbo. I need to do it on this side. You can see I already have one here. It's gonna be the exact same thing, just on this side over here. And the bar is right here. This is the other side of the turbo mount, and there's the flanges. So the these flanges are really nice to use. I like to unbolt everything on the car. I can't stand to have a bar running across my engine bay. So if I'm working on it, I can't just walk in or winter tear down. You want to paint everything. You got to paint around a bunch of stuff that's on the car. These these hot rods are always being changed. You're, you're, you're changing a turbo. You're redoing the hot side. You're doing something. I like to be able to unbolt things and then still use, you know, the spots maybe in the future to, you know, change it but you still have an anchoring point you don't have to necessarily cut and grind the entire engine bay down so these things are really really nice for doing things like that they can be used for transmission cross members uh front ends uh you see them a lot on like the, the rock solid stuff you can make it you know disconnect you can use them on turbo mounts pretty much anything that's a bar you can have it disconnect with these guys right here so today i'm going to show you how to put this disconnect on this bar right here this is kind of the little process that I have of going through of doing it, make it somewhat simple. So the first thing you're gonna notice about them when you get them is that they don't actually fit over the bar. Um, we have them cut a little bit small, so that way you have to take off some material because you want them to be a really, really good fit. So step one is to take just a little bit off. There's usually a burr right there. I don't know if you can see it. The video's having a hell of a time focusing. But there's a burr right there. Take that little burr off. Um, with a barrel sander and then they fit over perfectly. So I just took that burr off and now they slide right over with a pretty tight tolerance. They don't have a whole lot of movement at all in them. They're pretty tight, which is nice. So now I'm gonna bolt it together. So now that you have it bolted together, the next step is actually put it on the car and index the flanges as far as level or however you want them oriented. The trick to that and some tips is I usually put these disconnects about an inch and a half from what I'm bolting it to. That gives you plenty of room to get to it. You can go closer if you want to, but it's just nice to have an inch and a half. It's just what I always use. Um, right now it's sitting right at about an inch and a half. So they're a quarter inch thick. A nice way to make it so that way this thing's not flimsy and around in the car and spin on you and everything is to take a piece of tape and put it on inch and a quarter and inch and three quarter. And then this thing won't really move too much and it'll stay somewhat straight. Kind of like that. So here's the uh, bar in the car. Right there. Got my laser level set up so that way I can confirm it. But once you have it set, this can be mounted. You know, I usually like to make them level this way. They look nice when they're level. You don't want to do it at an angle and make it look like shit. Um, I have an ice tank going right here and this bar needs to be as far that way as possible. So I'm going to orient this flange this direction so that way it gives me the most clearance this way. If I put it this way, obviously it's going to take up an extra, you know, quarter to three eighths of an inch. Put it this way and it only takes up a quarter. Um, so I'm going to put it like that. And then once I have it set, I'm going to mark it to index it. And I'm gonna do that with a level. So move this bad boy in there. Right where it needs to go, there. And then make this zeros, like that. Point one. Okay, now that we got our indexing mark, we're gonna make a line on this thing that's scribed and a little bit more permanent. And there we go, got a nice scribe line. Right there straight is an arrow. And there's my newly scribed spot on my mount. So the next thing I'm gonna do before I go tack on this thing is I'm actually gonna clean these up. They have some scaling on them. So I'm gonna clean them up, smooth out the edges, make sure they're kinda nice, and then I'm gonna put it on there and get to welding. I got both of them cleaned up now. I rounded off the edges, made them a little bit nicer. Um, I went ahead and marked it with a black marker just that way you guys can see in the video um, a little bit better. 
what it looks like. I got it kind of rolled up on a piece of tape right now, just that way it's sitting level for the video purpose. But now that I got the flanges on where I want them, marked, index, everything, I'm kind of ready to cut it. And this is where people sometimes get a little confused on how to do this because there's two ways to make it so that way you don't mess it up because it's going to get shorter because you have to cut the bar. And I like to make it so that way you fuse the inside of them. If you take water anyways, you fuse the inside of them and then, then you weld the outside. It just makes it look really nice. So I want the bar all the way in to the edge. And I just want to do a single cut. If you do that, it's going to shorten. It's going to shorten the distance of however wide the blade is that you cut it with. So what I would recommend doing, if you know you're gonna put a disconnect somewhere on your mount, is you make the bar itself however much longer that the blade is that you're gonna be cutting it with. My bandsaw that I'm gonna be cutting it with, that blade over there is a 16th of an inch. So I need to take a 16th of an inch and add it to this bar when I made it. And I did that already. So for the video purpose, I already have this bar. I can lose a 16th and it's still perfect. If you're making something, you need to make sure that you leave yourself a 16th of an inch. That's not a lot. Usually it won't you know, be a big deal. Worst case scenario, you have to back this out a 16th. And I'll, let me show you how to do that right now. So if I know that I made the bar, it's perfect. I can't lose that 16th of an inch or I'm using a you know cutoff wheel and that thing's an eighth of an inch. It's really wide. Um, this is how you do that. So I take this guy right here my caliper, and I set it to like an inch or something. And then I take my black line and I make a scribe mark. I only got one hand right now, but I make a scribe mark on both bars so that way I know what one inch is. And then I will cut it in the middle or wherever and come back and when I'm going to weld it up, I'll make sure I index it and make sure that these guys are exactly an inch again. But since I don't need to do that, I already accounted for this, I'm gonna do the first method, but I'll go ahead and make a line just to confirm and show you guys that you can kind of do a sandy check you know, having a scribe line and coming back to it before you weld it. But I'm going with option one. So option one, you can lose a 16th off this bar, not a big deal. Cleaned up, indexed, you're good. You can go ahead and tack the inside guy right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and tack this guy to this, leaving this bolt down tight so that way they stay together. Now I got it welded on that side, welded on that side. So the next step now is disconnect the two and make my cut. Now that I got it cut, I'm gonna go ahead and fuse the inside of this bad boy all the way around and then just face it off on the grinder by grinding it flat. Okay, I got it all fused up. Uh, didn't use any filler. I just fused around there just to fill the gap. And you don't have to do this. You can leave it bare on the inside. I just like to do it because it's a little bit nicer of a method. It doesn't leave a little gap inside of there or anything. This surface is now flat. So the next step is we are gonna take this flange, put it back on there, bolt them together, and then take this bar that we cut off there, index it back on, tack it, and then fuse the inside of it as well. Bolt it back together, and now the next thing to do is to take the piece that we cut off in the bandsaw and put it back in all the way seated, and then tack on both sides. And this doesn't need to technically be indexed because it's you know the same size. It doesn't, it doesn't matter which way it goes, but just for uh, training purposes, I'll put it back and index it tack back together and now I'm going to disconnect uh, the four bolts and fuse the inside of this one. At this point I am ready to fully weld the outside. I have it bolted back together. Both insides are ground down and flat and I'm ready to weld the outside. Uh, before I do so I will recheck the overall distance. My mark is right there. It's hard to see but it's a little scribe mark and when I did it I did it at two and a half inches. So if I get right on it and come back I'm right at two and a half uh, right there yep that's where it's at mark two and a half so we're still good um i checked this before i tacked this other side on i just forgot to show it the video but i did recheck it before i welded it all back together and it is true and straight now it is time to weld this end up fully uh before i do so i will mention that i do bolt them together when i weld both sides just so that way if i end up warping these things from heat they warp together and i will cool it down with air after i'm done uh, so that way, if it warps at all, like I said, they'll, they'll warp together as they're bolted on. So keep them bolted together when you weld them. Flange is completely welded now. Looking good. Top and bottom. Uh, just because I know somebody's gonna ask, the material I'm using is 095 chromoly. Uh, welder setting setup, uh, FUPA 12 cup, it's my favorite. Miller Dynasty welder. And I'm running 145 amps. Pulsar settings are 0.7 seconds, 
peak time of 40%, background of 25. Uh, that's what I'm using. 30 uh, on the gas flow. That's just the setup I'm using in case somebody asks. I got it all welded up in the car. There's the bar that I was just talking about. There's my disconnect. Looks pretty good. Turned out nice. So we can focus it. There we go. Turned out real nice. I was able to actually weld it to the car uh, while on. So I was, I haven't disconnected it yet is what I'm saying. Um, so that's always the fun part <clears throat> is once you get it fully welded and then cool it down with some air. I got this one all welded too. Ideally, when you take out those bolts and you take out those bolts, it doesn't have like a ding, you know, or any kind of play to because you welded it all in the car. Um, that's the fun part to see is just how well it'll fit. So let me unbolt them and we'll see. I took all the nuts off of this side and then took all the bolts off this side and you can see that it fits really, really well to the bolt out. This one's still on there. But as I'm, it has movement this way, obviously, but when you go all the way against it and you move it across, it fits like a complete glove. Absolutely perfect. So really nice. All those line up really good. <clears throat> it turned out super good. I'm pretty happy with it. Um, but yeah, check it out. We have these available. We make these uh, at Scram Speed. Hit us up on our website, scramspeed.com. Pick up a pair of these things and they'll help you disconnect anything that you need to uh, have removable in the future. Like a turbo mount. So thanks for watching, guys.